believe. Am I seeing this right? With the pennies on the bottom, way to go. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, this is a huge swap meet, like you see in the South and some other parts of the country, but this is on so often that they have all sorts of permanent facilities and we are having the swap meet breakfast and we get to see faces. Yay! <laughs> Everybody loves to be filmed when they're eating, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny you pointed at that because I was just going to start talking about that. It's, uh, it's a New York made accordion, but it is really fancy and it's celluloid. You have to actually play. Oh, vehicle. it's okay. I just wanted, I was like, oh, I just have to touch it just for a second. It's so neat. And mother of pearl down here. Yeah, they're beautiful. I could only find one of them online and it wasn't exactly like this one. And they say it's 1930 something. And this one's maybe a little bit older. I think it's 20s or 30s. Yeah, it looks like it. Neat. And, and did you see the songbirds on the ends? Oh, that's really cute. I didn't notice those were songbirds. How cool. Oh, thank you. How much is that? I'm asking 200. Yeah. Oh, it's worth 200. If I had it, I'd put 200 on it. If somebody yeah. put it in the shadow box, they can get five to six. You know, for a wall hanging? For yeah. art? Wall art? It would be fun as art just to use, but actually it's funny how many times when I've had them, the person buying it actually wants to play it. Which is amazing because I can't even imagine. <laughs> Yeah. He's sort of along the same type of thing as Mr. Bartender, but he's the bubble blowing monkey and he was by Alps of Japan. This is a 19, late 50s, early 60s thing. And it's great that he's got his original box. May or may not work. Sometimes these battery ops, even if they've never been used, don't always work. How much do you want for this? This fellow's got a variety of stuff, new and old. We keep picking up the same things. Oh, are you kidding? You know lots. This guy's got some cool stuff. He's got the Howdy Doody Uke with the box and then all these rubber cars. And I like rubber cars. My great aunt and uncle had them from the 30s in the toy box when I was a kid and I got to play with them. Okay, so that's got the clip-on shelf on the end. That's terrific. Yeah, no, I'll take that. Thank you. I like it. And then, uh, oh, and I should have asked how much Howdy Doody was. Well, he needs two strings. He's $40. Oh, yes, that's right. And strings for those are harder than they look. Well, I'm going to get the sewing machine and I'm going to get the five sun rubber painted cars because they are just a nostalgia kick for me. It's a really cool pedal car. It is a hot rod, so it looks like a 1960 vintage racer. And, well, this would have come out about 1960, I would say. So that's pretty neat. And then next to it is this really cool apparatus here. BM Lawrence Company, and it says Zao. And I have to admit, I'm not sure what this fires, but it looks like it's a projectile of some sort. So I'm gonna have to ask, what in the world is this thing? Uh, I think it's a noisemaker. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it says Zao, so yes, that would certainly make a lot of noise. So it's like a big siren for a... Not a siren, a bang. A bang. Oh, okay. Cool. Here's some interesting stuff made out of bullets. Speaking of repurposing, here's a bunch of shells turned into all sorts of crazy, cool-looking stuff. I like the rocket here. Helicopter. These all seem to be priced around $12 each. And I have to say they're very clever. I don't know where they're made or who did it. I'm hoping the fellow who is uh, working here can tell me a little bit more about them. Well, I found a couple of neat things in this guy's spot, and then he's got all this Royal Copley for three to five dollars each, and there's some neat pieces, so I'm gonna look at those. Next to it, he's got the train cars, and I think these are by Boyd's, if I remember right. I'm not taking a picture. I'm just taking a picture. No, I'm just taking a picture of that where I can The ex see. Alexandrite glass, of course, is neat because it changes color. All right, here we go into a new realm of swap meet and flea market. There's so much here. I mean, you really have to get here early and really hoof it fast. And while we're filming, you know, we go at a different pace. So we're going to see as much as we can. And 
then we'll just have to come back. This is a different type. I've shown you the other kind with the shot glasses, but these were to put uh, cocktails into, like a premix into little old-fashioned glasses. Now, I don't expect any of these to be bargain price, but look at the A&P truck from the late 50s, early 60s, new in the box. It's just driving out of the box for the first time. That is priced at $3.95. I don't expect there to be big discounts on any of these because this is a really good collection and a lot of folks who do toys will buy and sell retail at the swap meet level. But these are in really nice shape and or unusual like this Buddy Elf concrete mixer is something from the late 20s or early 30s that you rarely see. You've got the steam tow truck, mobile clan, I like this one here, it's the paddy wagon. So if you are under arrest, you might see the back of that. Miller Ironson Corp of California. That is a new name on me, but that is a really neat tow truck. And they've got some electric trolleys. This is just a fun space to see. Oh, and here we go. Got to show this because we've got a lot of folks up in Indiana who are very familiar with Santa Claus land. And here's Santa Claus's mailbox going to Santa Claus, Indiana. Apparently this is either someone put an SO decal on it or this was at an SO station. Very cute, $3.95 on that. Well, here's what's great about flea marketing. Alex just found these in the dollar bin. And look at that great lily of the valley frame on the one on the right and their children. People like children in frames. These are both going to be right around 1900. Great deal. You're finding some good deals on stuff, I'll tell you. I'm impressed. I'm, I'm spending more than I should and you're getting like great things out of the dollar bin. I'm looking in the wrong place. I always love showing the pink pigs because there's 110 different varieties all made around the 19 teens in Germany doing different things. This guy on the sledder is a little different than you usually see. I'm not sure why a pig is on a toboggan. Oh, that's okay. I love those. I that's think exactly they're so neat. Oh my gosh, we really do have similar, oh, this is fun. I, I love the fact that we look at similar things. Lawn tennis, that's neat. Pretty much after frog. Frog looks like he's missing his eyes. Oh, he's not missing everything though. And then I like these green boudoir lamps now. Those might glow uranium, but they're not necessarily. Can't always tell with that shade of green. And then here is Smiley Pig by Shawnee Pottery with his clover and the green kerchief. See, he's even wearing a mask. It is a sign of the times. And next to it is a dollar bill toilet seat, I believe. Am I seeing this right? Oh, with the pennies on the bottom. Way to go. So now there's a bunch of sheds here as well full of stuff. And these are more permanent vendors because they have a place they can put everything when they're done. This guy does estate liquidations and he's got some great swung glass there and some other stuff. So let's take a look. Okay, we are now inside the building and looking at salt and pepper shakers, but I like this little gal. She's like a half doll, but she's actually a pin dish from Japan from the 1950s. She just lifts right off. Oh, made in Japan, so more like 1930s, which makes more sense. I was thinking that 50s was a little late on that. These owls are kind of fun, but they're more recent vintage. Yeah, I'm going to ask about this little box. I wanted to zero on this because this is something I'll research. This is by a company or a designer called Fred Press, which was big in the 60s. You can see the design on the side, but I'm used to seeing glass done by Fred Press. I've never seen the ceramic head. And he's got some information here. And here is, it says 1200 sold by first dibs. So we'll find out whether they got it or not. First dibs, of course, is very designer oriented and they are top value in the market. A bunch of the little Stanley planes, including the really, really small ones, which I find interesting. And they tend to be more expensive too. 45 on that one. These were for very fine, close finish work. This one's a Woodcraft USA. This one's shaped for molding, it's $80. 
the little finishing planes are often more expensive than the standard ones that you just sort of roughed up a door with like these here. We see a lot of these number fours. Exit, not an exit. What am I supposed to do? I like these older signs. And we'll have to see what the prices are, but I'm going to walk in here first. We have a lovely canine friend here. Hello, sweetie. How are you? And then a bunch of dies and rules and a machinist chest. This is $60. That's actually a pretty good price for these. They definitely are more desirable now. A lot of people with small collections of other things, like rules and tape measures, are buying these to store their collections. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm from Jersey, so I got enough eagles and fish. Navy's Coronation. Let's try something different. I these pins. National Aperitif. I think I got over 200 so far today. <laughs> Made in Belgium. Okay, that wasn't what I was expecting, but that's very nice. Doers. Lots of interest in advertising ashtrays now. But I like this because it's got all the different old cars on it. Old cars of the horseless carriage variety were a big thing in the 60s, so that's when this is going to date from. Well, Alex is going to town here. She's got the swung vases that you saw on the counter. She's got some dresser boxes, the little Fenton hobnail vase, these great acrylic candles, and this really cool Flamingo Compact. So you'll have to watch for her sales because she's going to have some good stuff for you guys. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. This guy gets neat old telephones, and I bought some signs from him before. You don't have any signs today, do you? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. I think I got one of those from you before. Yeah, those are for if you wanted to direct dial, you had to be able to do that way. There's a glass diesel sign. Okay, and then the one in that's the one. I bought one of those from you before. I'll take it. So there we are. It was so much fun being at Webster with Alex and Erin, and you should check out her Chapter 2 Vintage Co. if you haven't already. And she is getting better and better stuff and doing better and better at her sales. And uh, she had some really great stuff last time. And she bought some really cool stuff today. I didn't show you all of it, so you need to go see her channel and see what she got. Anyway, in the meantime, this is George the Antique Nomad, and I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and here on YouTube, so I'll see you at one of those places soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Well, I'm home from seeing Alex and Aaron and having a great time at the flea market, and I just want to quickly do a little haul wrap-up so you can see what I bought. I think we did pretty well for only having about three hours. These phone signs are the old glass ones out of the phone booths and they are getting to be hard to find. I bought the last two the guy had. He had new old stock. He used to work for the phone company and he buys and sells and repairs old phones and I got those for 20 a piece. I've sold them for 45 before so I feel pretty confident in paying that price. The two metal signs, not an exit and first aid, came out of some huge warehouse factory building in North Carolina. And they're tearing it down, and some of it had fallen down, but the things they could salvage, they did. And they had one not an exit left and a couple of first aids, so I took the best one. They were only $5 each. The ice cream box is no big deal. That's Arctic ice cream. I'm sure that they went out of business and that's why there's a bunch of their stuff around, but I like those 50s packages. I think it was all of a dollar. This is neat. It's a desk model for a Northrop T-38 Air Force jet. It's a little banged up and it's been in a window so it's faded some, but I think this was only $15, so I had to have it anyway because desk models, especially of fighter jets, are pretty good money. I suspect even in that condition it might be $40 or $45. The Sea Scout manual from the 1930s is when Sea Scouts had just started the Navy version of the Boy Scouts. And so that's an early manual. So even though it's a little beaten up, I was willing to pay $5 because I think that'll triple 
my money on that one. And it's interesting to look at in the meantime. This is just a sweet ad with the Gibson girls and it's just an ad placard that was framed from a store but I liked the look and I think I paid three or four for that. Now I stepped up and paid 55 for this teapot but look at the lettering and the foundry methods. Look how they're kind of crude and rough and the lettering is deep. That's because that's as good as they could do in the mid to late 1800s. And this one was made by I.A. Shepard out of Baltimore. And I've looked into these and they seem like they sell for about 135 a piece. These old cast iron kettles that are Victorian are in demand. Cast iron's in demand. Let's take a look at these up close. New World Pirate Era Spanish Bronzes. So these are little pieces of bronze coins that were cut down or were taken as pirate's booty. They're from about 15 to 1600 AD. They're in the slabs, which means that they are guaranteed by International Numismatic Bureau to be what they are, which is something that gives people confidence in buying them. And I only paid $7 a piece. I suspect they're worth 15 to 20 each. Clearwater Sun is an old newspaper and that's local interest, so I bought that and I buy old telephone stuff because there are collectors, all those old bell system things and this one has cool stuff like satellites and push button phones and they're starting to get into new technology. Bell system was trying to push that they were bringing us new technology. So the phone company was trying to show us that they were being very modern the progression of their technology so that we would think that they were great and that they shouldn't be broken up. They were broken up and a whole bunch of new technology that made everything we're doing here on YouTube became possible because of it. So big companies, staying big companies is not necessarily the best thing for innovation. We learned that from the Bell system. Speaking of bells, I thought this was cool. It's from India. I like Indian brass that's painted and it's got a wonderful sound. And I like that it had its little receptacle. This is going to be from about the 1950s or 60s when they're painted like that. And that cost, I believe, either three or five dollars. I thought it was well worth it. These little doodads are just fun things to put in a little case. The Heinz pickles, you had to go on the factory tour or to the Seattle or New York World's Fairs where they had pavilions. They also put out these little charms. That one is for strained strained foods it says which you know it's baby food so it's kind of generic two dollars for cope in 74 that's an election related thing and so is kennedy those all cost a quarter a piece so there's nowhere but up to go on that now this is cool because it's a straight razor it's a later one but it's a schrade walden so this is something that was made probably about 30 years ago there are some guys who still use straight razors and Schrade was a big American knife maker out of and you can see there it says S-C-H-W-A-L which is Schrade Walden and the stock number so this is going to be a later piece but it had a great handle and I think I paid all of five dollars for it. I thought this bottle was neat and I actually paid five dollars for it as well because it says veterinarian and I just thought that was really cool. Might have had horse embrocation or something in it. Speaking of horses, or in this case steers, these are from Red Steakhouse in Williams, Arizona. And this is good 1960s era Western cafe wear. I had the ashtray, I believe, and I think that Barb at Winking Owl ended up getting that from me. Uh, the salt and pepper shakers are good. I believe I paid five dollars for those. They should sell for about 20. And the old beater jar here, they're even better if they're in color like green uranium glass, but the fact that the beater worked so well made it a yes for me. And I paid about 15 for that, but people like those. They'll pay 35 to 40. The rubber cars are sun rubber and I just had to have these because these were so similar to the ones that were in there it says sun rubber way down in there if you can see it 
It's got a patent number from the 1930s. These are all 1930s looking cars, and this one even still has its original rubber trailer hitch. With these old rubber cars, you really have to look to make sure they're not cracking or crackling because they do, rubber does decay over time. So if they're especially kept in a hot place or something like that, you're gonna have problems if you don't check that out first. I think I paid 10 a piece for those. They should be worth about 18 to 20, but I just liked them and they reminded me of my great aunt and uncle's toy box that I got to play with uh, when I was a kid, so I had to have them. I might just keep a couple. King George IV Scotch Whiskey. I like old bottle openers. We'll open it up so you can see. It's a little twist bottle opener here. They had five on it. I think I got it for four. And the old advertising ones, this one's going to be, this is St. John, New Brunswick, is the source of this. And so that's going to date to probably the late Prohibition or early post-Prohibition years. She was very cute. She's like a half doll, but she's actually a Japanese dresser box made in the 1930s. She says made in Japan. And if my mother sees it, she'll probably confiscate it because she loves these kinds of things. I think I paid five for that. I did pay 20 for this pink pig, but it's an unusual one because it's playing lawn tennis, or badminton, as we would call it. And I have a friend who's a tennis player, and I think she's going to love that. For $8, I picked up this shaker with the recipes on it. I usually get about 20 to 25 for the vintage cocktail shakers, and I don't have a hand free, but if you take this cap off, it has a strainer in it. This is a 1970s era where it's got the recipes on the side. Then I'm going to pull back here. First, I'm going to show you this. This is a McCoy Jardinier, and it's got the later McCoy mark. I've seen this pattern. I've owned this piece several times. But you see on the bottom, it's got the more stylized McCoy from the 1960s and 70s when these modeled glazes came back into fashion. Originally, Hull put the, I'm sorry, McCoy, Originally, McCoy put this out in the 19, late 30s. It's one of their most popular lines with the laurel berries and the diamond pattern, but you don't see this glaze very often because it came out late in their production. So I thought that was unusual. And I paid a little bit of money for the lamp on the left and the table on the right. They each were in the 40 to 45 dollar range these lamps which sometimes you'll find real bargains on still because a lot of people say well they're just from the 80s and oh they're they're not attractive to me anymore oh they're mauve well you know what all this 80s stuff is starting to come back in brass is starting to come back this is high style 80s kitsch and i figure if the 50s lamps that were kitschy sold so well that you hardly ever see them anymore well then the 80 ones must be next i bought one of these a few years ago and the other dealers laughed at me and it sold right away for 95 dollars and i'm going to price this one about the same and then these tables with the they're a little different than the burl tables that you see but it's very similar in that it's a piece of burl and wooden shelves that slot in and are attached with wooden attachments underneath these are something that we saw in the 1960s and 70s. You can see how it's made there. And this should sell for about $85 to $100, or possibly more because burl tables are so popular. There were a few other things in the hall that I can't quite put my hands on, but I'll just have to show you those as part of my upcoming show video. This stuff's all going with me to the next show I do here in Florida. So I'm very happy to have some fresh stock and it was so much fun being with Alex and Aaron to find all of this. Webster is such a great market. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!